a manager, a Jehovah's Witness patient, right? Like, this is something that I had never encountered before. I've had patients who are Jehovah's Witness patients before. I've had, you know, many different patients with different uh, spiritual or, or just philosophical beliefs uh, in terms of what treatment they wanted to receive or didn't want to receive. But I'd never had a patient who, you know, was refusing to get what the thing they absolutely needed. Um, but this is not something that hasn't been encountered before. And there is actually some amazing high quality literature on how to treat Jehovah's Witness patients. Um, the reality is, is that patient would not have been a candidate for surgery when he arrived because he was too unstable. Okay. So what they do is uh, the patients are given a high dose regimen of erythropoietin, which is the hormone that causes the stimulation of red blood cell production. Okay. And they give them a uh, vitamin B12 shot, or not B12, it's a B complex shot. Okay. And uh, they watch them in ICU and they uh, allow them to regenerate their own um, uh, red blood cells and they wait for them to obtain a hemoglobin of 90, and then they send them off to surgery. Wow. Um, that's, that's what, uh, this is from a, a journal in the uh, British Journal of Anesthesia, um, and it's called the Perioperative Jehovah's Witness. Uh, it's a review, so we'll link uh, into it. It's just one of many papers. There are different ways. This isn't definitive, but there are whole treatment protocols around uh, these patients. And what I think is important to recognize is that, um, uh, I mean, you and I both uh, have spiritual beliefs, uh, and people come from all sorts of different backgrounds. And the important thing to remember is that uh, patient's autonomy is 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 the utmost importance. So just because it puts us in a difficult situation or it makes us uncomfortable, um, if the people have the capacity to make these decisions, they should absolutely be respected. Yeah. And um, the Jehovah's Witness community is amazing for advocating for their patients. Uh, um, before there was any family that was able to get down there because they were all coming from out of town, there was somebody from that community that was there to talk with the physician about this patient's beliefs. And though it may, you know, though it's a very difficult situation, um, I, I found that inspiring in a lot of ways, and it reconfirmed my commitment to, uh, uh, yeah, to to patient capacity and autonomy. Well, I think, I mean, a lot of times it, it uh, you run into some of those same problems with like DNRs. Mm -hmm especially DNRs for people who are younger that, that might have some chronic illness that they, that are terminal illness that, that you sit there and go, but I can help you. And respecting the patient's wishes is the, the number one thing to do every time. Yeah. Right. You, you can't go against the patient wishes because Absolutely. it's, that's not, it's not your place. Yeah. And we run into that with the DNRs. And now that they've legalized um, medically, assisted medically assisted death, I was looking for the PC term for that. Yeah. Um, Made, as it's called up here in Canada. It's, it's a discussion that's even more important yep. because that's something that a lot of people have ethical, uh, strong ethical opinions around. Yep. And again, it comes down to what the patient wants. Yep. And, and, all of these are linked in that one aspect, and we are going to run into them, especially here in Canada, more and more. Um, and we have to we have to be willing to accept that. Absolutely, yeah, I, I agree with you. And and uh, people have the right to informed consent, and they have the right to informed consent over every individual treatment. And um, the reality is, is it's really easy. Um, because we have this wonderful training and education that we've been given to start believing that we know what's best for people. And the reality is that uh, we don't. And uh, even sometimes things that are, you know, objectively good for them, it's not something they want. And, you know, I know that you and I are both big believers in individual liberties. And, uh, you know, just aside from the fact that it's a, it's a legal standpoint, but, you know, um, this is somebody's, this is somebody's body. This is somebody's belief. And, um, so, you know, it was uh, it was incredibly difficult to deal with uh, from a from a provider point of view. But, you know, that's that's just part of the game. 